comic fans, true believers, webheads, it's time for another episode of Worthy Ones, the video series where I take the newest number one issues that I read for the current comic we book week and I deem them worthy or not worthy. Today we got five books to discuss and let's jump into it. So the first book we're talking about today, webheads, is Jimmy Robinson's Junk Rabbit. This is issue one. I had no idea what to expect out of this comic book. All I knew was that this took place well into the future. In fact, it was the year 2198 where uh, Earth just accumulated all of its junk and uh, there's this place where humans live now called Dome City. And again, everything else is surrounded by junk and people live on the moon and all kinds of other crazy stuff. So I wanted to see what this book had to offer. The artwork was okay in the comic and nothing spectacular or uh, made me go, oh wow, this is the best artwork I've ever seen. In fact, this book, when I read it, was actually quite slow. And what this story is about it's about a social media influencer, like a YouTuber in the future, who winds up getting murdered. And the kid winds up getting murdered by this mythical legend called the Junk Rabbit. And the kid that was murdered, the YouTuber, is heir to the, I guess, the city or the kingdom or whatever you want to call this dome city place. Uh, and... You know, and they're trying to find out again who this junk rabbit is and who caused the murder. They don't think it's junk rabbit because it's just a mythological, mythological type of thing. Now, what I didn't like about this comic is it was just dialogue heavy. I didn't really find the story all that interesting, and I didn't get vested in to any of the characters, and we didn't even see the junk rabbit at all except for the very last page and when i saw the character on paper i was like eh, it's okay so i'm gonna deem this book not worthy yeah man this book was like just real slow and i was expecting a little bit more murder or something more involved i just didn't want another mystery when you kind of already knew it was the junk rabbit to begin with yeah, this book for me was a D plus at best. It was just very slow. And what makes a comic like this, it's not only the world, right? But you got to get that good character building. And the world was just full of junk. So who cares about junk lying all over the floor? It's the characters that can make this one. The next number one we're talking about this week is Planet of the Apes issue one, 20th Century Studios imprint from Marvel, right? Uh, we got David Walker and David Watcher who does this book. The artwork is okay. It's nothing like that overly excites me. Uh, some of the characters' facial expressions are very blank. They're just like, and it doesn't really get any real character emotion out of you. You can't really feel that on the pages. So I've seen much better character emotions and facial expressions. Here in the action scenes, the character looks very stiff, very boxy. So the artwork was okay at times, but again, below average for my standard. And uh, yeah, that's that. So what did I think about this story? Again, I'm not a huge fan of Planet of the Apes. I've mentioned that before. And what this story had to offer was that these apes were being used for clinical trials to help cure Alzheimer's disease. It seemed very promising, but as time has gone along, there was a virus that was developed from it. People are blaming the, the apes, the chimpanzees, the monkeys for spreading the virus. And then when studies were actually done, they found out that it wasn't the apes' fault uh, they can't spread the virus, the humans can, but again, people are looking for a scapegoat saying, well, if you didn't infect the monkeys to begin with, none of this would have happened, and it was just this whole political outbreak, and people are on two sides of the camp. Some are trying to destroy the monkeys, some are trying to protect them, and they believe that if they protect the monkeys, they can create a cure for human civilization, and there's this big battle and big war and everything else. This book is not worthy. 
uh, I just, I don't, I'm not interested in it. It's not anything that I haven't seen before when it comes to Planet of the Apes because at the end of the book, the planets, the, the Planet of the Ape creatures and the apes themselves kind of stand for themselves. They're going to protect themselves at the end. We're going to see this war between the monkeys and the, and the humans. And again, and this, this has a lot to do with what's going on in the world today because of COVID and everything else. So I really wasn't interested uh, by the time I got to the end of it. So I'm going to give this book a C. It, I mean, it was entertaining. It was an interesting story. It's just not something that I want to read. I also wanted a little bit better artwork. However, if you are a fan of the Planet of the Apes, this might be something that you might like because, you know, we haven't seen them in the comic books. So check it out if you're a fan. The Nasty Issue 1 from Vault. So if you're a slasher fan, I think you're going to enjoy this comic. Uh, this was very fun. Now, this book is written, I think, by a Scottish writer or it takes place in Scotland or something like that. So some of the dialogue in this book is going to seem a little bit off to you. Uh, so for instance, like university is called uni. There's some things that are pronounced differently. So you might have to think about it for a second. Here's the artwork in the book. That's like the opening pages as this little boy is falling in love with slasher films. It originally takes place in the 1980s. Um, and then it goes and fast forwards 10 years to 1994. Now, this is really cool because the book opens up with the kid, right, watching slasher films. And he's like, man, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. And his, his mom's like, go outside and play. That's what boys like you at your age should do. And he's like, dude, like, listen, going outside and playing is overrated, right? So... All of a sudden, he goes outside. He doesn't know what to do with himself, and he creates an imaginary friend. And his imaginary friend is called Red Ennis from the slasher movie called Labor Day, right? So it's hilarious. And you get to see this kid spend every day with his imaginary friend. And even at 18 years old, okay, this kid still believes in his imaginary friend. But at 18, you wind up getting to see him you know, have his friends and he hangs out with kids at the video store and they watch slasher f flicks with each other. And so really cool stuff. Now they make the kid Thumper um, look like the dude from uh, Stranger Things, Mike, right? Kind of looks like him. And we find out that this video store is in danger of losing its, um, I guess it's going to go close out of business unless they do something big. So they created this big event that's going to go on uh, to draw people to their store, uh, this festival. And there's this horror tape out there that's been destroyed. It's got... Uh, obviously bad reviews from everybody and you're a delinquent if you if you watch this thing so they get this tape and there's legend says that if you watch it you're going to kill yourself right and so they're afraid to watch this movie they pop that freaking vcr tape in that uh, vhs player and uh then something happens at the end of the book i'm gonna deem this book worthy this is fun if you love horror if you love uh, this time period of comics or with video stores and things like that, I think this book is going to be for you. I'm going to give this book an A? No, maybe a B plus. Yeah, we're going to change that to a B plus because the direction that I wanted to go, it didn't quite go, but I'm still intrigued on the direction it may go going forward okay so again maybe it was very predictable of what i wanted to happen in here but it is going in a very different direction and i cannot wait for issue two scar issue one from dynamite entertainment now i'm not gonna lie i'm actually a lion king fan when i watched lion king when i was younger I heard James Earl Jones as Mufasa, and I'm like, man, that is great. You couldn't have picked a better voice actor for Mufasa, that royalty, right? So good, so great, and I love the overall movie. So when I heard that Scar, the villain of that movie, was coming out with his own comic, I was like, yeah, why not check it out? Gotta love the cover, too. Unfortunately, the... The artwork is not quite, I feel, where it needs to be. 
Um, I think at times it was okay, but it lacked that detail. And characters' faces, they all look drunk. Like, Mufasa looked drunk. You got Scar that looked drunk. Like, I get Scar. He's a little bit raggly. He's rough around the edges. But Mufasa should have looked a lot more grand, right? Here's some of the other characters in here. Uh, again, not bad. And I felt that this comic book is good for all ages. So... Uh, I, you can't appreciate that. So what was this story about? Well, in this issue, you wind up seeing Scar cry about Simba being born. And he realizes now he has no chance to be king. And he's just all self loathy and pity and whatnot. And he's just having a really bad day. And you get to see him do battle against like, I don't know, was it wildebeests or whatever? And they, they push him over the edge uh, because they outnumbered him. And then he gets knocked out. And uh, you start seeing him just like, I don't know, just like hallucinate. He's unconscious. He's dreaming of a battle with Mufasa. You get the vultures who are like surrounding him, waiting for him to die. And then they come up with this thing going, well, maybe if we can get on his side, that once he becomes king, we can no longer go hungry, right? And so I was like, well, that's, that's a kind of a good idea, I guess, you know? So they're kind of coming up with the scheme of him killing Mufasa and becoming king. That's basically what this comic was about. I just felt like it was just very drawn out and it was the same thing that I was reading over and over again. Uh, not much really progressed the story, so I feel like right from the start, they're stretching this thing out to make it, obviously, however many issues this thing is going to be. So I'm going to deem this book not worthy. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I will not be continuing this series going forward. There is other money I can spend on other comic books or other things. But again, for a younger audience, I feel that this book is perfect for, right? And if you're a true Lion King fan. So I'm going to give this book a C plus. Again, I thought it was okay. And I think it's great for younger audiences, but not just for me. That's right, guys. Ric Flair. Issue one. When I saw this thing coming out, I was like, I'm all over this. Listen, I'm not a huge wrestling guy, but I did grow up to these wrestlers. Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Randy Macho Man the Savage. Um, just all these different wrestlers from the back in the... Uh, AWA and WWF days, right? So I really watched wrestling back then. And when I saw that Ric Flair is going to be some kind of like secret operative or whatnot, I'm like, yes, I'm definitely buying this all day long. Let's check out the artwork in this comic. You're kind of like, well, well, what's going on here? What is he getting a perm? <laughs> Here's some of the facial expressions right here in the comic. Uh, let's see if we can come to a part any action scenes. Yep. This is when he's skydiving from a plane uh, It's just so funny and, and, and when you're reading this you're intrigued because you want to know how he got to this point Like why is he a secret operative? Well, we find out that uh, In his travels that's after he got done wrestling uh, He wound up getting into a plane accident and they used Ric Flair uh as like the six billion dollar man or the billion dollar man and they 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 brought him back to life they made him stronger faster and able to fight anybody right and so he wakes up and he winds up getting recruited by the sergeant here and this book actually has some really funny lines in here especially from the sergeant sergeant and he wants rick flair to destroy all the russians right and we find out that like captain america is no more there's no other you know superheroes that can do the job but rick flair can do it and he's the undercover wrestling secret agent and you get to see him you know endure the super soldier serum he gets stronger and whatnot which is hilarious and then he gets sent on this mission uh to stop like 
drugs being smuggled and whatnot and they're being smuggled through like magic eight balls you know the ones that you ask questions uh it was hilarious you wind up seeing him get his special hairdo uh just just great great things in here you get to see him in action uh this is a book you must read because you will get a kick out of it it's such a page turner i'm gonna deem this book worthy the grade that I'm going to give this book, though, however, it's going to be an A. It's not an A+, plus because the one thing that happens in this book is that it ends too soon. There's so much potential when it comes to code name, Ric Flair, Magic 8-Ball, right? Right away, we get dive we dive into rick flair and he's a wrestler he winds up becoming this you know super agent and he goes on a mission and then the mission ends and the story ends we could have made this a mini series we could have seen him wrestle some matches we could have seen him get into that action and make it much more detailed and with a cliffhanger there we can have seen his transformation a little bit more into the secret agent him learning to be that agent and then going into that into that mission right we could have seen all those different steps and still have the quirkiness that this book has to offer right and the cockiness of rick flair i just feel like this just ended too soon and i was disappointed by that i didn't realize that this was just a one shot so that's why i can't give it an a plus because i wanted more of this comic book but if you're looking to read it, go ahead and read it. It is a blast. So I want to know in the comments below, what books do you deem worthy or not worthy this week? And of course, guys, if you love the content, I'm going to leave you more content right here. In fact, this is my newest comic book day haul. It shows you everything that I picked up for the newest comic book week. And of course, guys, as always, keep buying, keep collecting. But more importantly, always read those comics. I'll see you guys real soon.